A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y2 Fafu. My name is Maxwell. We okay, want to discuss about fit and misses of FIFA World Cup ahead of the final tomorrow. But continue being part of the show. Talk to us as well. Hashtag Touchline Y254 at Wasike Maxwell. Which team are you rooting for as far as tomorrow's finale is concerned? France up against you know, Argentina, two-time World Cup champions and France the holders of the tournament currently coming to a culmination tomorrow. Tell us also what's happening in your neighborhood, especially during these Christmas festivities. A lot is happening at the grassroots level where football forms the basis of, you know, the sport that enjoys huge following. Like where I come from in Mumi as a good friend of mine and brilliant legal mind, Robert Ojo, organizing a great football tournament, bringing several teams together from Namamari Ward. An eight-day tournament happening Tilunganyiro Primary School and, you know, trying to give back to the society and enabling young people to showcase their prowess and, you know, ensure that they sharpen their talent. I'm sure the people in the studio with me, Ken Andrew and Barry Sila, they also have what's happening in the neighborhood. Good to see you, Barry. How are you doing, man? Very well, thank you. Where, Where you come from? What's happening? Of course, it's a football season. Waishimiwa now are busy. Oh, it's the whole Waishimiwa. Yeah, which is good for the clubs at the grassroots, yes. Wow, and now straight into the interview. Hits and misses of FIFA World Cup, Ken, the team you were supporting got eliminated. <laughs> now tomorrow you saying you siding with the African brothers in quotes, France. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I don't want the other team to win, you know, for reasons, you know, people already know. <laughs> I think the brothers can do it again. It's an amazing feat if they do it again because, you know, back to back, especially with the talent that we have seen in this World Cup, that will be a really, really amazing feat. Amazing feat indeed. Barry, yourself, the team you're supporting, is it in the finals of the World Cup? No, it's not. But now, like my friend Ken, we'll, we'll just have to support uh, France. Not because Argentina is a bad team or anything, but because uh, I would like to see Didier Dichot make history. Didier Dichot has won as a coach and as a player, including Champions League. If he if he etches his name on history books, I think he can, he can we can wish him a happy retirement now. Happy retirement for Didier Deschamps, looking mm -hmm. forward to defend the title he bagged mm -hmm. in Russia in 2018 FIFA World Cup. So tomorrow's finale, but what has been your outstanding moment for the tournament? My outstanding moment has to be, you know, uh, the group stages. Mm -hmm. Aside from what you have seen in the knockout stages, I think the group stages this year have been amazing. Nothing I'm going to cut you short, Ken Andrew, a little bit of technical hitches on his end, but it's being rectified in not too long. But mm -hmm. what, what, what caught your attention? In Qatar. What caught my attention will surprise everybody is that VAR was not controversial. Uh, is that the referees were in fact who are a bit controversial in some of these games in the group stages. Uh, uh, I'm happy VR for the most part did their job, but uh, also we've seen exciting talent in the group stages. Uh, we've seen players from uh, like let's say Morocco, a young man called Unwai has been has been a standout. Uh, we've seen Mbappe improve uh, game by game. He's one of the best now in the world. Uh, I think overall Qatar has done a good job in, in organization and uh, we, should, we have to give them plaudits for that. Indeed and you know you remember when the tournament was kicking off there were a little bit of concerns over Qatar hosting the tournament with some people raising mm -hmm. questions that probably they won't be in position to you know excellently host the tournament but they, def they have defied all odds and yeah, yeah. you know done what is contrary to many people's expectations yes yes uh, i think what fifa has helped they've managed to host a good tournament they've brushed aside the the politics the controversies and focused on on on, on the end game and which has seen them deliver one if if i'm not wrong if not the best one of the best world cups ever because it's been a tournament of surprises a tournament of goals a tournament of, of fun good fun, uh, fans experience and then when they close it tomorrow I'm sure it will be one to be remembered for ages. Yes. Ken yourself you are talking to us about the most outstanding uh, you know uh, thing that we probably caught your attention since the tournament kicked off last months until tomorrow as it comes to finale of course France playing against Argentina. Ken Smike gets rectified. Mm -hmm. You can continue talking to us, Barry, mm -hmm. and tell us about, you know, the whole experience, you know, Qatar mm -hmm. hosting the tournament and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, in 2026 going to United States of America, Canada, and Mexico, and in terms of facility, what mm -hmm. do you make of, you know? It's the been excellent. They spent, I think, around $2 billion, of course, some chunk of the money coming from FIFA. But it means for you to host a world-class tournament, you need investment, 
you need uh, what you call good political environment. Uh, and, and, and I believe, if I'm not wrong, Qatar will have made double the amount they spent because, first of all, of the element of sports tourism. The fans enjoyed a great experience. Um, TV gave the world a uh, great view, and, and we have watched excellent football. Uh, so overall, the whole package has been good, and we have to give plaudits to Qatar Football uh, Association and, and the government as a whole, plus FIFA, for giving us you know, this great tournament. Ken, last weekend we were talking about you know, Qatar defying all odds and doing what the people never imagined of them. But we're going to talk a little bit uh, regarding officiating. Do you think it's met the standards expected of our match officials who have presided over several matches? I think, first of all, there's sort of been something new with the officiating because we've seen the, the new rules on the added time and extra time. You know, it's been really, really long. Not so many <laughs> added yeah, minutes. So I think that too came as a shock to a lot of people because we're not expecting that after a game, 10 more minutes, 14 more minutes. So mm -hmm. that was something about officiating that was different. But also, there's been serious outcry from a lot of players on, on the level of refereeing, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd expect after World Cup games where the best referees from across the world are selected, it's a bit quiet on the refereeing. But we've seen teams who were said to be favoured themselves saying that the referee was not good. In the case of Argentina and Netherlands, both teams had complaints against the refereeing. So, you know, it's sort of a, it was, I think it was, it is something to do with the game itself. Always there'll be complaints about refereeing. But uh, in the next tournament, I think they have to really, really scrutinise the referees they are taking because... I know they received a lot of noise for taking the referee from AFCON who finished the game in the 85th minute, you know. So, so some of those decisions really need to be looked at uh, by FIFA. But I'd say personally, I think the ref officiating was not the best, but it was just okay. 2010 World Cup in South Africa, 2014 World Cup in Brazil, Brazil. and 2018 in Russia, now in Qatar. Do you think Qatar has uh, been able to surpass, you know, the performance as we witnessed uh, a few years ago? I think it has, you know. The tournament has lived up to the billing. It has, it has gone even beyond expectations because, you know, people are expecting a flat tournament because of everything that was being said about it. But from the first game to the last game in the group stages, you've seen huge shockers, you know. African teams beating the likes of Brazil, you know. South Korea beating Portugal. Saudi Arabia beating Argentina, you know. These are the things that were not happening in the previous tournaments because, you know, in the previous tournaments, big teams will be big teams in 2010, Netherlands will beat Brazil, you know, that's sort of okay. But Brazil being beat by Cameroon, you know, no one saw it coming. Being, Brazil being eliminated, uh, they have, this team of theirs has been eliminated by Croatia in the round of 16, you know. No one saw it coming in the quarterfinal, sorry. So mm -hmm. the, the, the hits in this World Cup have been a lot on the pitch because the quality itself in the football and the number of shocks we have seen, even though your team went out, you still have to stay in awe and just say, you know, you never saw that coming. So. You know, how crazy is that? You accept and move on and accept that the tournament is indeed fantastic. Cadmus, Dr. Cadmus, Dr. Wahad, as he's reminding us that, you know, there's a third playoff happening this particular evening and he's saying Croatia are going to dismantle the Moroccan team. And Morocco, under coach Regragui, has been fantastic, though getting eliminated at the same final stage by France, but, you know, they have done very well. Yeah, they have done very well. They have shown that they have good players. You know, the likes of Amrabat have been amazing. Ziyech has sort of done away with this Chelsea form, form and has played really, really well for Morocco. And Nizri has been amazing for them. You know, they've come together. They play as one unit. Yes. You look at the hard work they put in after they score a goal to defend. You know, it's something unreal. And, you know, from the expectations of everyone, the African team that was going to do well was Senegal and then Cameroon. No one had Morocco, you know, in, in it. But, you know, they have shown and become the best African team. And, you know, you also have to mention Tunisia, even though they didn't make it out of the group stage, I feel like they, they had game, you know, they had enough game to really come and do something like Morocco is doing. It's just that, you know, they were unlucky at the final point that uh, Australia won their game. But Morocco has been really outstanding. And, you know, after this World Cup, you'll have to respect them as the best team in, in the history of Africa in, in the World Cup. Africa getting represented by African five African nations in the tournament, unfortunately all of them, uh, except for Morocco. Morocco got eliminated at the group stage. Uh, Senegal made, Senegal it, made it to the 16. round of 16. And, uh, you know, at least each one of those teams did, you know, mm. amazing and uh, wonderful achievements. Morocco, you know, mm. getting an opportunity to beat Belgium mm. and, you know, getting to the mm. 
semi final stage tunisia beating holders france and cameroon mohamed abubakar you remember him mm. uh, removing his shirt after they beat brazil i mm. think the first african nation to mm. beat brazil cameroon though mm. a mixture of results but ghana also mm. doing very well beating the likes of serbia south, yeah, south yeah. and yeah. south korea yeah. and senegal also not mm. getting uh, not left behind as they beat hosts yeah. qatar yeah. Yeah. so what 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 has been your take home point regarding performance of african teams at the world cup i think overall they uh, the past expectations uh, a lot of people would imagine we are not going to win even matches um but to be honest we did well we did well. uh and you, everybody has to remember we 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 we, we uh, for the first time in the history of the the tournament all the five african representatives were had local coaches and uh, people were, were, were shouting loudly are they going to make it the morocco coach i think i think 60 days before the tournament he, he was he was, he was employed by morocco federation to take over uh, so it, it tells you with determination with belief with good preparations africa can 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 go far so for me I'm, kudos to them they've they've done their best especially morocco they've showed uh, we've showed why uh, Morocco showed why uh, Africa can no longer be taken for granted. So it's other, uh, up to other teams to pull up their socks and, and show the world what they are made of. I think now proper policies need to be put in place if we can compete at the big stage. Because the last time an African side did very well was in 2010. Yeah. World Cup when Ghana uh, went yeah. up to quarterfinal stage getting eliminated uh, by the Uruguayan yeah. side, right? Yeah. Yes. So yes. this time round getting into the semi-final stage, which means in 2026, we can get into the final scale. Yeah, yeah, and you, you also have to think of the, of the teams that have been left out of this World Cup. You have the Super Eagles, Ivory Coast, you know, and Egypt, they mm -hmm. didn't make it. So you, the, the sports will be increased to nine in the, in the next World Cup for mm -hmm. Africa. So you have to think that, you know, we will still do well in mm -hmm. the coming because we still have great teams that missed. And also there's a lot of development mm -hmm. on the continent in terms of sport. We know the game in South Africa is incre has improved significantly. We know in Kenya there are plans to improve the game. And also the existing countries that have been making the World Cup but did not make this one, you know, they'll have to pull up their socks and have to do something better than Morocco because Morocco has set the standards, you know. Mm -hmm. African teams are not just there to be an experience and to live at the group stage as it has happened in many many tournaments you know if morocco can reach a semi-final and you watch afcon you know they, they don't reach the semi-final mm -hmm. afcon mm -hmm. that tells you you know something can happen mm -hmm. you know this ivory coast we have to back them to make the next world cup egypt mohammed salah has to play another world cup because he's, before he's done with football and the super eagles there's a lot of nigerian talent in the premier league in mm -hmm. leagues in europe that you know can be brought in to mount a successful bid to the World Cup final may be so. The, the, the light at the end of the tunnel for Africa after a very long while is shining brighter than ever. We are talking about hits and misses of FIFA World Cup in Qatar coming to a culmination tomorrow. And the, do we include the ban of sale of, you know, okay. rotten liquids as one of the misses? Because there were <laughs> hmm. a huge complaint, but it was around the stadium. But what do you make of the sideshows in terms of fans yeah. and, you know, hmm. outside hmm. the... Uh, uh, stadium mm -hmm. don't throw away from mm -hmm. the main stadium and what was happening just before mm -hmm. the game. I think the fun experience from my view, based on what I've watched and what we are hearing, maybe or seeing in TV, has been an amazing exp um, you know this country, Kenya, sent some journalists who are sharing some some of the experience they are even having as foreign journalists. It, it's been amazing and we have to congratulate uh, Qatar for, for, for for giving us this experience. Yes. Uh, I remember Qatar is a very highly um, Islamic state. And uh, some rules can be strict, especially you spoke about alcohol, non-alcohol non consumption. And, and I think it, in, it, to some extent it brought some kind of order and discipline. Yes. Uh, but fans also got opportunity now to do other things, mingle, you know, and, and, and share experiences. And, and I think, for me, if the fans have, have got their money's worth. Value for their money. Value for their money, yes. Okay. I think uh, that ban mostly hurt the English fans only <laughs> because uh, the, the rest of the teams there, nothing was made of it, you know. After the first group games, you know, everyone forgot that there was a ban on alcohol because the football 
was too yes, good yes, for, yes. for you to remember. And all the politics. The beauty of the football matches overshadowed. Yeah, the band. it carried everything. And also, they had their chances uh, outside of the stadiums. You know, they were well established, you know, fun, fun points where they could have everything they want, you know. Outside the stadium, you'd have your fun in Qatar, but in the stadium, you know, you are restricted to enjoying the football, which has been in great quality. So, kudos to them that, you know, making that ban was not an easy fit because, you know, we've seen the other World Cups, it has always been allowed, but, you know, when you come into someone's house, you play by their rules. And as he said, Qatar is an Islamic state where they do not necessarily allow the drinking of alcohol. And uh, the ban was made. They, they, had, they did a lot, a good thing, in my view, because now people are focused on the games. And as Baria said again, their money is what was paid back. And uh, nothing can be perfect. Do you think there was some undoing in terms of organization of the tournament? What can you make of, you know, the negative take-away points that characterize the yeah. I think, 32 uh, competition, 32 team competition? I think the, the, the only thing that I'd say is uh, better the coming World Cups because there was a lot of talk about immigrant deaths and they're not being looked at at the same way a local Qatari death would have been looked at. I think that was the only big thing because, you know, if all the deaths were caused by the building of stadiums... Uh, you I know, think even one of the Kenyans, 24-year-old young man who was working there, collapsing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, things, his life. things like that are not easy to take for mm -hmm. the families of, of the migrant workers. So maybe in the next World Cup, you know, we, the minim, minimal deaths are something you like to see because the numbers have been staggering if you compare them to previous World Cups. So I think for me, that's the only thing, negative thing that really, really overshadowed the World Cup and should have been, you know, even after the World Cup, should be looked at better to establish exactly whether the causes were natural or unnatural. But aside from that, you know, the rest of the tournament, I'd give Qatar all the credit in the world because from the stadiums, to the fun experience and to you know the visas and everything they've been amazing sorry for me maybe to add to what can i say the the bad part of the tournament was the politics that was drawn in i remember the pre iran us match uh, the, 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 the 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 press was heated uh, one iranian journalist was not very happy with the without the american captain tyler adams was calling their country uh, Iran instead of Iran, and also uh, LGBTQ. I don't understand how it had to. The politics was drawn yes. right into the field, yes. including small issues like the amban, and s some of these things FIFA should manage better. The, the politics must completely be kept away from football, and because um, if we start mixing these issues, um, then we lose the focus, and. Um, Yes, FIFA to some extent, and Qatar maybe managed to quell it, but social media was spreading it like fire. Uh, so maybe the other negative was, was now uh, Twitter, Facebook, the social channels, uh, platforms, which especially the Israel, uh, sorry, the Iran and US issue was blown out of proportion. But it's a good thing the players kept their heads and managed to, you know, to. To settle it to on the focus. Field. Yeah. And uh, despite the elimination by host Qatar, you know, there has been that theory that, you know, whenever hosting nation gets eliminated at the early stage of the tournament, you know, it uh, loses its oomph. But, you know, still yeah. fans showed up in large numbers at the stadium to watch, including the nationals of Qatar themselves. Yeah. And, you know, also, uh, coming with the World Cup, you know, no one expected the Qatar football team to, <laughs> to mount so anything. it was expected. Yeah, it was, you know, they were in well, a tough the group. But the beauty was just hosting. Yeah, mm. just hosting, I think, for them is enough. Because even if you look at, you watch the first game against Ecuador and people are already saying, you know, Senegal will beat these guys. So it was already an easy match for the other teams in the group. And uh, they didn't make a good account of themselves. And once they left, you know, it, the, the football was normal because there were better quality teams left in the tournament. For them credit for hosting but i do know that they have great projects to produce better teams in coming tournaments them and saudi arabia you know they're really investing in their football at a, at a at the grassroots level all the way to the top and also you look at the the amount they're willing to push in football you know you can only see better things to come because they have been doing well in the arab cup and also in the asian asian competition so maybe give them 2026 to see what they come out because we saw it saudi arabia in 2018 they had a torrid world cup the, one, the ones who are conceding they conceded six goals to the hosts russia but you look at them they moved now they beat argentina so you know it's a matter of time 
then maybe Qatar can, can be proper in the next tournament. And I think another mess was to see, you know, several heavyweight teams which had been tipped uh, by the bandits as favorite to clinch the title, you know, getting eliminated early. Germany yeah. uh, following suit what happened to them in 2018 alongside yeah. Belgium, yeah. which got to the semi-final stage of last tournament, mm. yeah. getting eliminated so early and that was... You know, yeah, I think that, that was fun to see. You know, people are it shows that the competition is, yeah, the is growing and it's getting uh, extremely yeah. harder. Yeah, the quality that you know Germany has to, for them to be beat by Japan, you know, it was it was it was really un unforeseen because they are leading that game. But you know, Germany are one of the teams who really took the politics to the field, and you know, mm -hmm. that caused a lot of talk after the game of as to how they should carry mm -hmm. themselves. But aside from that, you know, Belgium had their own internal problems with uh, Kevin De Bruyne saying some things in the press that his teammates did not like. And also you have to give credit to the smaller teams, you know. Some, some, a team like Japan, you know, has been really amazing. Because Japan beat start, Germany and Spain. Yeah, they beat Germany and Spain. And the Spain team, you know, it's, mm. it's unreal, you know, the, the number of touches they'll have in a game. Mm. But Japan was sure in the second half, two goals, one was... Uh, you know, people contested it, but, you know, credit to them. Those are the things people like to see in the, in the World Cup, you know. The effort that Japan has put in developing the game are from their side, you know, being repaid. So, you know, in the next tournament, maybe teams will try to focus on the football way more than having political messages right before a match because, you know, it takes a little bit off the edge. The so game. plenty of upsets in this tournament. Saudi Arabia beating now Imagine. the... Uh, probable winners of FIFA mm. World Cup, Argentina during mm. the group stage, Japan beating both Spain mm. and Germany. Mm. What else was witnessed? Uh, Cameroon, that's Cameroon, Brazil. Cameroon, you know, beating Brazil, Tunisia, France, the holders. Mm. So huge upsets were witnessed, right? Yeah, huge upsets. Even if you ask me, US drawing with England, that's mm. an upset mm. because we expect, you know, England to run all over US. So these upsets means teams have invested and teams are developing. There's no longer, for you to be in the 32 going to the World Cup, you're not a small fry. Uh, so it's a good thing to see, even especially the, the big, big, um, big teams falling. It tells you uh, no, teams is no team is safe anymore. So you cannot go to, 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 to the pitch and say you're ranked 10th and the other one is 80th, then you say this is easy. Nowadays football is crazy uh, and results, as we have witnessed, speak for themselves. Someone is saying that, you know, one of the uh, misses of FIFA World Cup was to see, you know, the, the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo living on a low after getting benched mm. for Portuguese two successive games and, you know, not lifting the title and playing it mm. for the last time, the last dance, both yeah. Cristiano and Lionel Messi. Yeah, and, you know, it's not only the two of them, you know, guys like Suarez. Suarez, Luis Suarez. Luka Modric, you know, they wanted to really... 37 years old. Yeah, they really wanted to win this thing, but you know, football. Football is a crazy game. You never... What if you want to happen will never happen at yes. times. So, you know, it is sad to see, especially Cristiano, because he's a man who's won almost everything in football, and he had a, a really good chance with the Portuguese squad, because it's a good squad, but they just couldn't make it past a great Morocco side, you know. It is sad to see him leave without the trophy, but you know, He's had a great career. All of the guys, Edinson Cavani, great career. Suarez, mm -hmm. you know, even Busquets has already won it and now he's retired. You know, this is football itself. If Messi can win it, you know, well and good for him because he deserves it with the career he's had. But then again, you also have to look at guys like um, Giroud. He mm -hmm. can still get it, you know. So we just have to wait and see. But the number of good players bowing out of this World Cup, you know, it is alarming because it's a whole generation of... a whole generation who have grown, grown up watching these types of players leaving so it is it is bittersweet yeah bittersweet indeed can uh, barry your last comment regarding hits and misses of world cup before you take a break and come with a review of tomorrow's finale uh for me i think uh fifa uh, again must and Gianni infantino watched almost every match yeah yeah he's the president he gets free things i guess <laughs> For me, as I maybe close this topic, is uh, FIFA, honestly, you know, this is the biggest tournament with over 2 billion viewers. They must improve on officiating. There are no two ways about it. it for me, that's the biggest miss. Uh, we, have some, we have seen some scandalous, you know, officiating, and I'm surprised some of these analysts on TV don't even look at that. I, for me, I still believe Morocco would have, should have earned a penalty, at least one. 
Um, and and you know we we need to be consistent. Some some of these matches uh, officiating have not been consistent. And uh, if FIFA cannot do anything about a key, a central bit of the game called officiating, then we are doomed. Then we are doomed. Indeed, we are taking a short commercial break before we come back next with the preview of what is said to happen later today. Croatia up against Morocco in third place play of them tomorrow, the elimination of the tournaments with the final pitting. Holders and reigning champions France up against two-time World Cup winners Argentina.